In this video, we're gonna go over the first nine months of us running our furniture business here in Houston. Stick around to the end and we're gonna go over a full profit breakdown. You don't wanna miss that. You might be just as surprised as we were. <laughs> Let's go. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. So let's catch everyone up to speed. You have been watching us start our second furniture business. Way back in the day, we started out by building furniture while we were stationed in Minot, North Dakota with the Air Force. We built everything we needed for our house, and then we had friends start to get interested as well. They thought it was cool and they wanted it for their house. So naturally, we started building stuff for other people. But with both of us working 80 hours a week, we didn't have enough time to build everything that everybody wanted. So we doubled our prices and nobody canceled their jobs. So we doubled them again and only one person canceled. That didn't really free up our schedule that much. <laughs> so we continued to raise our prices and we started to see the potential of what running a custom furniture business could do. We started to get plugged into the community and started selling things to like regular people, not just our friends. It was during this time that we found out that the hurricane hunters were hiring part-time meteorologists to fly on the plane. You know, the plane that flies through hurricanes for research. That was our dream job. So we drove down, did an interview, got the jobs and decided, okay, great. We'll quit full-time Air Force, we'll just do part-time and we'll run this business the rest of the year. So we threw our tools in a rented house here in Houston, which is this house, and then we went to Mississippi for a year to retrain for those new jobs. After getting trained up, we moved back here to Houston and started our business this year, 2021. We made our first sale in February and it's been a wild ride so far. So we're gonna go through month by month and talk about what we did, what we learned and how much money we made. So we're gonna pick it up in February where we made our very first sale. We spent February going to a lot of open houses. All right, first real estate agent, super nervous. Number one. I don't know why I hate this so much. Okay. We've got over our script, we're ready, we can do this. Yeah, we got this, let's go. We needed to find a way to get known and grow our business in a brand new city. We figured selling closing gifts to realtors would be a really good way to do that. We would get access to their network of tons of people they know throughout the city, and we would also get a chance to advertise to their clients, which were new homeowners. New homeowners generally need new furniture. So our plan was to go to these open houses, surprise the realtors with a free gift, in the hopes that they would buy more closing gifts from us in the future. In total, we went to about 12 open houses with personalized boards for the realtors. And this was a great method as long as we met the realtor that was the listing agent because that's who we had engraved the board for. But it wasn't always the listing agent that was showing the house that day. Anyway, all in all, in February, we sold about $400 in boards. March was tough because we left for about three weeks to go to Reno, Nevada. The Hurricane Hunters Unit, we also fly winter storms. And we were flying some of the atmospheric rivers off the west coast of California. That's great. Start a new business and then leave a month into it. Great idea. These jobs constantly get in the way of our schedule, but they're what allows us to not have to draw a paycheck from these businesses. We can reinvest all that money back into the business, so it, it's a trade-off. It also gives us the free time available to run the businesses, so we can't get too upset about it, and plus it's our dream job, so we're really excited to do it. I say all that to say it's inconvenient, but it's worth it in the long run. But later in March, Jenny met a realtor who fell in love with us, our story, our boards, everything. She was amazing. She's probably our number one customer to this day. And through her multiple orders, she's helped us stay one step ahead of the other realtors and have our processes and procedures all ironed out before a ton of people come and try to use them and break them. Also in March, we tried attending a realtor training event. A couple of y'all have suggested that where, you know, once a month or so, all the realtors of an office sit down and they go through a bunch of training. And we came in and did a little presentation on our closing gifts and why you should give a better closing gift and blah, 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 blah. And that totally flopped. 
people weren't paying attention. It was very clear that it was just another meeting they had to be in. And it doesn't matter what we did in that meeting, no one was going to pay attention. Our time was much better spent doing other things to prospect clients. Also in that month, we built a living room set for a friend and sold a total of, I don't know, add it all up, it's like $3,900 worth of boards and custom furniture. April was a game changer for us. We realized that we were spending so much time to get a single $125 sale from these realtors. And then after that, they would just forget about us and they would, you know, forget to order a board for their next closing. It's not that they hated us. It's not that they were mad and didn't want another cutting board. They're just busy and forgot about us. So we were thinking, how can we be remembered so that we don't have to do so much work to get the second and the third and the fourth sale? We realized that the realtors who wanted to buy one board also wanted to buy two, three, four more boards. They just didn't have time to remember, go to the website, run through the whole checkout process and time it all perfectly so it got shipped there before the closing date. So we had to change our plans. If we're trying to solve a problem for these realtors, we need to come in and be the solution. We can't just complain and expect them to remember us. We have to make ourselves memorable. So if they wanted to buy 10 boards, we might as well just sell them 10 boards. So that's exactly what we started doing. We sold the boards in multiples of 10. The realtors would pre-order the boards, we would keep the inventory in our shop, and they would just notify us anytime we needed one, and then we'd ship it out. This gave us the cash up front to build the boards, it created a really organized system for the realtors to use, and it allowed us to build lasting relationships with these people because it takes a while to go through 10 boards for some of these realtors, which means we have a conversation going on for months. So in April, we made $3,300 in just board sales by using this brand new method. So in May, that's where we learned that driving around Houston looking for open houses was a waste of time. It was way cheaper to just box up and mail the board and surprise the realtor than it was to drop in on their open house where they're busy focused on other things. This was another huge game changer for us because the realtors were shocked and excited to get a gift in the mail. I mean, who doesn't like getting packages in the mail? So Jenny was able to follow up that unboxing experience with a phone call, and a lot of times the sales just made themselves. The realtors knew that the homeowners would feel just as excited to receive a gift like that because they had just gotten one themselves. In May, we sold $5,200 worth of cutting and charcuterie boards. June was our first slow month, really for a lot of little reasons, but it just went slower than the previous months. We had to learn that even though we had a really good system, sometimes you just need patience and persistence to make it work. In June, we only sold $2,719 worth of boards. July was about the same as June. We kept doing what we were doing, Davis left to go fly some tropical storms, and overall we made $2,030 in board sales. In August, it was Jenny's turn to fly through some tropical storms. And while she was busy flying and having fun, I was at home building two custom walnut consoles for a friend of ours. And Jenny, in between flights, was making sales calls and selling boards also. In August, we made $8,395. In September, we had really dialed in our process with realtors. It was going fast and it worked. So I started looking into selling to other industries because we don't really want to handcuff ourselves to just realtors. The real estate market goes up and down all the time and we needed to have a more stable, sustainable business model. This was also the month that we started touring and looking at commercial spaces. We were getting pretty busy and the house was feeling even smaller than usual. <laughs> we made another $3,200 in September. But October, October was our biggest month ever. We finally got a hold of some high volume luxury home realtors here in Houston. And we also got a hold of some mortgage brokers as well. $9,500 worth of mortgage brokers and realtors. And at this point, because we're still building and doing everything out of the house, we even had to say no to a $7,000 kitchen table build and push it into 2022 because we can't do it all in this tiny house. We need more space and we need some employees. This has been an amazing nine month run for us and we're showing no signs of slowing down. We've learned so much. And I know it might not seem like it to some of you, but we're taking this business really slowly, to be honest with you. We're learning how to operate, grow, and scale our business. That's a lot more work up front 
but it will mean that the business can grow bigger in the long run. Our goal right now is not to make a ton of money. Our goal is to build systems and procedures which will then make us more money long term. It's an important nuance to understand. But in total over these first nine months, we've made I don't want to get it wrong. 38,000, because somebody's sitting over there with a calculator adding all this up. $38,644 in these first nine months. If we apply the same profit margin that we do to our boards, because that's mostly what we built, that's a little over $21,000 in profit. Now, we don't see any of that money because we keep reinvesting it back into the business and our systems and our procedures, but $21,000 in the first nine months. And thanks to our media business, as well as our Air Force Reserve jobs, we're able to keep all that money in the table business and keep reinvesting it. We don't need to take a paycheck yet. And the trade-off is that the woodworking business is growing a little bit slower than we would if we were actually doing it full-time, full-time. But trade-offs. This first year is looking really good. We already crushed our annual goals like back in July, and we can't wait to see where the end of the year takes us. So subscribe to see our year in review video. If you wanna go back and watch all the videos leading up to this one, I'll put a link to that playlist here on screen so you can watch those videos. If you got questions, leave them down below the like button. Other than that, thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the player, stick to the player.